For months, we have been seeking a better way to minister to the spiritual and temporal needs of our people in the Savior's way. We have made the decision to retire home teaching and visiting teaching, as we have known them. Instead, we will implement a newer, holier approach to caring and ministering to others. We will refer to these efforts simply as ministering. Effective ministering efforts are enabled by the innate gifts of the sisters and by the incomparable power of the priesthood. We all need such protection from the cunning wiles of the adversary. Now, in an effort to move us closer to that gospel ideal, this newly announced Priesthood and Relief Society ministering concept will include, among other things, some of the following elements. We will continue to visit homes as possible, but local circumstances such as large numbers, long distances, personal safety, other challenging conditions. This may preclude a visit to every home every month. Whatever schedule you establish for actual visits, that calendar can be supplemented with telephone calls, written notes, texts, emails, video chats, conversations at church meetings, shared service projects, social activities, a host of possibilities in the world of social media. However, I should stress that this expansive new view does not include the sorry statement I recently saw on an automobile bumper sticker. It read, If I honk, you've been home taught. Please, please, brethren, the sisters would never be guilty of that. I, sp I speak to the brethren of the church. With these adjustments, we want more care and concern, not less. We at the church headquarters don't need to know how or where or when you make contact with your people. We just need to know and care very much that you do make it and that you bless them in every way that you can. We have a heaven-sent opportunity as an entire church to demonstrate pure religion undefiled before God, to bear one another's burdens that they may be light, and to comfort those that stand in need of comfort, to minister to the widows and the fatherless, the married and the single, the strong and the distraught, the downtrodden and the robust, the happy and the sad. In short, all of us, every one of us, because we all need to feel the warm hand of friendship and hear the firm declaration of faith. A new name, new flexibility, fewer reports will not make one ounce of difference in our service unless we see this as an invitation to care for one another in a bold, new, holier way, as President Nelson has just said. As we lift our spiritual eyes toward living the law of love more universally. Another blessing of these inspired announcements is the opportunity for young women ages 14 to 18 to participate in ministering as companions to Relief Society Sisters just as young men their age serve as ministering companions to Melchizedek Priesthood Brethren. Ministering looks like Elders Quorum and Relief Society Presidencies prayerfully counseling about assignments. It looks like going for a walk, getting together for a game night, offering service, or even serving together. It looks like visiting in person, or talking on the phone, or chatting online, or texting. It looks like delivering a birthday card and cheering at a soccer game. It looks like sharing a scripture or quote from a conference talk that would be meaningful to that individual. The Savior is our example in everything, not only in what we should do, but why we should do it. His life on earth was an invitation to us to raise our sights a little higher, to forget our own problems, and to reach out to others. As we accept the opportunity to wholeheartedly minister to our sisters and brothers, 
we are blessed to become more spiritually refined, more in tune with the will of God, and more able to understand His plan to help each one return to Him.